Last week on How to Cook Like a Bayesian. I was planning to cook for myself. I had three dishes all picked out. And then my family invited themselves over. So, things got a little out of hand. I now have 12 different dishes to do. There are three dishes in the oven and three desserts in the fridge. Okay, so we're going to start with our apple pockets. Uh, they're going to be gluten-free down on the outside of each pocket. And that's it. A little, ooh, sizzling, sizzling. And we haven't even gotten it into the oven yet. Are you ready for the finale? Let's cut like a Bayesian. So as you can see, I am still working. Right now, I have a really, in front of me, I have a really lovely tenderloin. This is prime Barbadian beef that we picked up from over by BADMC. It is a full tenderloin, and because I want it to hold this round shape, I'm actually tying it up. <laughs> yes, I tie up my meat. Now, it's a pretty simple procedure. You go under, oops, you come around, keep your string free, you go in, and you pull. You try to keep them as even as possible so they're, they're equal space apart, but you just do that down the entire piece of beef. So I'm gonna put my finger here one more time. Gonna go under, pull the beef up, through the piece that was already there and pull. See? Now I'm gonna tie off here because I only want about that amount of beef. So if I tied the whole thing and then cut it, I would end up cutting the string. So that wouldn't make any sense. So I'm ending right here. I'm not tying anymore. I'm just going to trim off that end of beef. I'm just going to finish by going now in the opposite direction and coming under again so that I can tie a knot. So I, I have excess string. And that's because you're not exactly sure how much string you're going to need for a particular uh, piece of beef. So you get excess so that you can finish neatly and so that you don't run out in the middle. I mean, if you run out in the middle, you just tie on more string and keep going. But still, I prefer not to run out in the middle. So I do my best by getting more string than I need. So I'm just making some knots here on the final, final cord so that when I cut, my string and I cut my beef everything will hold together nicely and you do not have to make you don't have to do this step you don't but it is very neat and so you do it I do it at least so there you go that is the end of my string I'm just gonna run over and grab my knife now And we were lucky enough to get into be a DMC butchery and to see pieces of prime Bajan beef being prepared for our market. So, salt. Want my stove on. Pepper. A mix of herbs. So I've got a little thyme. I've got a little sweet margarine, press that in, nip over, grab some oil, get my pan oiled up. Now, the purpose of this step is to sear the outside of the beef and that seals in the juices. So when the meat is cooking, it releases juice or liquid from each individual cell. You don't want those to get out of the meat because then your meat will be dry. So what we do, stir the outside of this, all the way around, kind of closing off that pathway to juices, and then we go in the oven at the temperature that we want to roast that. So that's what I'm doing now. So I'm gonna do the beef, then I'm going to run over and do the rabbit 
Chew. Rabbit is provided by Rabbit Association of Barbados. She's under the BAS umbrella. And they have been just an important source throughout this entire show where we've been to the market and seen the vendors. We've bought him chicken, we've bought him eggs. Now we're getting rabbit. So they're, they're a large producer when it comes to their agricultural products in Barbados. So we're really excited to try this fresh rabbit meat that they sent down, yeah? Right, so I'm gonna go in. So presentation side first. I'm going to go in, this is going to be the top of my roast, that's going to go in the oven top side up, so you always put that in the pan first. You want your pan to be as hot as possible. And then I'm going to quickly grab a pair of tongs. So on the underside now, salt and pepper again, we're keeping the seasonings on this very simple because this is, a tenderloin is such a flavorful piece of meat. It's such nice marbling, fat distribution to it, that you don't need to over season it really. Especially when you're roasting it. So I'm just going in with salt and pepper again, on this side, and the last of my herbs. Right, and what I basically want is color on the bottom. So I'm gonna two more seconds on that side. I'm going to rotate it all the way around until it's a marvelous golden brown color all the way around. Okay. So, so we're already starting to see the color on the top side. The first side that went down, you already see a nice golden brown developing. That caramelization adds flavor to your dish. It's just that when you caramelize onions, the natural sugars present in the food start to crystallize on the outside and that adds flavor to your dish. So you, so you want to get a little brown. Everything should be brown. The more brown, the better, right? Everything should be a nice golden brown or even darker. Nice hot pan, barely a little bit of oil. Look at that, lovely, lovely color. And of course the rum. Can't really cook without the rum, eh? So I'm just gonna deglaze my pan slightly with the rum over the top of the beef into the oven and then we're gonna make some rabbit stew. So any flavor that was left at the bottom of the pan, now I have it. And in here now smells marvelous. Perfect. Parchment in the bottom of our roasting sheet. And in we go. Okay, rabbit stew. So let's make some rabbit stew. Okay, so pan on. Gonna go ahead and salt, pepper. Again, salt. 
I like rabbit in a stew. This is my favorite way to enjoy rabbit. Um, pat it smoked, pat it a few different ways, but just find the meat falls apart in the stew really, really nicely. And just cut coating it in cassava flour so that my gluten-free guests can also enjoy the repast. A little oil in the pan again. And just like with the beef, we're gonna get some color on our meat. A little searing on before we go into our pressure cooker today. So the stew is gonna be done in our pressure cooker. So let's just get each piece of meat done. A little salt, a little pepper. All the sides. Coat it. Now, there's another reason. There's a reason for putting, now, when we did the beef just now, we didn't put any flour coating on it, but we're doing it for the rabbit. Reason being, the flour coating actually acts as a thickener as the stew cooks down. So that's why this one is gonna get flour while the tenderloin did not. And I mean, feel free to just salt and pepper everything all together mix it up but my pan is not that big it doesn't have to be a lot of flour you're just basically getting in enough to lightly coat you're not gonna taste you're not gonna taste the flour after it's not gonna be crispy or anything like that but the sauce will be nice and thick because you floured your rabbit pieces I don't find that rabbit tastes exactly like chicken but that's what people say. Okay, so all of our bits of rabbit are a nice brown color now. So time to get them into the pressure cooker. Ladies on the bottom. Just a little golden brown color. You're not cooking them all the way through, so just get that in there. Same thing over here. Everybody is a beautiful golden brown. Didn't take long at all. But trust me, that step is going to make sure that your flavors are locked in and your, your stew is tasty and your rabbit is juicy and nice. In it goes. Okay. Now, I'm going to split the butter. I'm going to get the butter in the bigger pan, I think. Yes. Turn this one off. So this is called, I'm, I'm calling it rabbit stew, but the proper name is rabbit chasseur, which means hunter stew or hunter sauce. And it is a typical sauce that you make with um, game meats. And so they're very prominent in this sauce. And so that's why I have chosen this particular sauce slash stew for my rabbit. So now I am getting a little color on my mirepoix, which consists of onions and carrots. It could have in some celery as well. I didn't have any, so it's not got any of that in there. So I'm gonna get some color. Every time I'm searing, every time I'm getting some color in the pan, it's for flavor. It's to get a little caramelization on whatever I'm working with. Um, because you're gonna put it in the stew and you don't want it to be basically bland, yeah? So you get in flavor at every step that you can get it in at. It appears as well as though, let me just move this over so I can reach. Our rice is done and we can finish that dish. So we're gonna do two dishes together. Look at us multitasking. Oh, perfect, look at that. So what I'm gonna do now, keep the temperature on very, very, very low. We're gonna quickly sweat the kale that we got from the organic growers, the organic growers and consumers association have brought us some nice fresh kale. There are two different kinds in here. So we're adding those greens. Kale is a green that needs to be cooked, yeah? Um, it could be a little chewy if you don't cook it a little bit. And we're finishing it with some coconut milk. Just gonna get a fork and kind of fluff up the rice. Mix everything together. Maybe two minutes to steam down that coconut milk. Not too much coconut milk. I don't want my rice to be 
too wet. Still want it to be fluffy, but I want that coconut flavor in there. So, greens, turmeric, and coconut. So we're back here. Look at the brown that you're getting on your vegetables. Look at that nice golden brown, dark brown color. That's great. Mushrooms. Mushrooms don't take as long to cook, so. Get those in. I know I'm anxious to get to the alcohol, right? But I'm actually gonna go to just a pinch of salt and pepper first to give the mushrooms a little flavor. The butter also is probably very good for this stew because rabbit is a very lean meat. So adding in a little butter and a little oil while you're getting everything ready for the stew is really gonna help with flavor later down. Just like the fat in the tenderloin was really good for flavor because rabbit has less fat content, you might add fat to that dish in order to make sure that it tastes just as good. Okay, excellent. Perfection, like that. So first I'm gonna go in with our local white wine, picked up from Carmita's. They usually have a variety of flavors. I like the jamun, I like the dunks if they have it occasionally. I've had breadfruit, that's pretty good as well. This one is a mix of fruit and spices, so you should definitely check this out. So first we're gonna go in with the wine. And then just a shot of the Mount Gay. Good, good. Of course it smells good now. Now that I put all the alcohol in, of course it smells good now. I'm gonna grab my spoon because I'm about to set up everything in my pressure cooker, set it, and forget it while we get some other stuff done. So, I need a spoon for the stock. Now that I've burnt the alcohol off our vegetables, looking very, very pretty, I'm gonna go in with some chives and parsley. Gorgeous. I'm gonna pour that over or a rabbit. Mm -hmm. All the flavor, all the flavor, get all the flavor in. Turn off the stove. Now I'm gonna go in with our tomatoes. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna finish off with our stock. Pour in. Right? Just to cover everything. A little bit more. And we're good. Lovely, lovely, jubbly. gonna give it a little 35 minutes to start. Actually I'm gonna take that up to 40. Perfect. Come home to the place you love. The sights, the sounds, the feelings. Come home to the taste you love. So bring home the flavor. Bring home the ham with farmer's choice. Bring home the flavor. Bring home the ham with farmer's choice. So, the marathon is almost over. We have survived. It's time to lay our salads because people are on their way and they sound hungry. Like, they call me with an attitude, yeah? So, I have my meal. 
we are making breadfruit salad. Very, very similar to how you would make your uh, potato salad, but we're using some good Bajan breadfruit. So I'm going in with my hot sauce. My mayo is already in the bowl. Oops, okay, we don't want to kill them. I like to apologize in advance. Some peppers. We got these from the market. We got a nice chocolate pepper in there, so you have to see some unusual colors, which I really, really enjoy. Some diced onion. Yes. Oh, this is flavor. I like raw onion. I like the little bite, the little tingle on your tongue when you eat it. And then, going with a little parsley. Nice, okay. So I just wanna mix that together. A little salt, a little pepper. While we're doing that, I'm gonna get the butter a little warm. And that's also going to get a little salt and pepper and some parsley to go over our organic steamed veg. So let's put this in here. Okay, put that down. And dress our breadfruit salad so we just cut it in cubes steamed it salt water nothing fancy but the final dish is gonna taste awesome and it's a very healthy carb it's a very healthy carb much like sweet potatoes so you get a lot of extra nutrients with your breadfruit salad or your breadfruit in general that you wouldn't get with like plain English potatoes, for example. So let's start boiling that up for the company. And then, gonna dress my steamed veg. And I'm gonna finish off with a nice cucumber and avocado salad because avocado has just come into season. I put in all of this in here, you know. All. Oh. I tell y'all, they're putting all of this in here, putting it all. Pop that down. Give it a little white patty back. There you have it. Breadfruit salad. Now I'm going to go in with a little pepper, a little salt, some chives. Chives. Parsley, I tell you. So I could have gone with some garlic chives here to go with the organic veg. However, my mom doesn't eat garlic, so I can't put that on the veg. So we're just gonna go over, add a little flavor to the beauty. Look at those rich colors. It tastes pretty decent too, if I do say so myself. Okay, so that's two dishes done. One more. Now, let's grab this cucumber. Remember, we're keeping for the compost. So I'm gonna start with stripes. Because I just wanna do a quick decoration on the plate. I'm gonna go here first. Keep those, keep those. Just gonna lay those across here. To mirror the tomatoes. I don't like that one. So I'm gonna get another one. Perfect. I'm gonna take the rest of the peel off. Not absolutely all of it, but most of it. Keep it tidy. Our cucumber. 
Now, our lovely in-season avocado. My avocados are extra tricky, but as long as that nut, that seed on the inside is loose, you can be sure that your avocado is ready to eat. And you just pull it up and out. This is really good on the compost heap as well. Or you can be adventurous, maybe don't chop it then, and let it sit in some water and get yourself an avocado tree. That's it. There you go. Now it's cooperating. Alrighty, so here we go. Gonna dress our cucumber and tomato salad. As you would know, with a little lime juice because otherwise your avocado is gonna turn some very odd colors. And you don't want that. Then a little salt. A little pepper. Some fresh herbs. Give it a little toss. So it's a lake dressing. Or a pickle. Depends on how much salt you really put in, but lime juice, a little salt and pepper. There you go. So I'm gonna put this on a bed of that lovely dual colored organic lettuce that we got earlier in our delivery. So now I'm just gonna grab some of that lovely organic lettuce. That we have here came in our organic box from the OGCA. We go there, then I'm gonna go with my avocado salad on top. So all the people who love their greens should love this platter. You get a little bit of everything on it. Perfect. Get the buffet line going. One. Dwellings, we believe that home means happy. That your home is a place where you do what you love. With the things that you love. And the people who you love. That's why our selection of housewares and fine furnishings is designed to inspire your dream home. Dwellings, we make your home happy. No, so instead of a traditional bread basket for our family, we're gonna give them some salt bread crustinis from homemade salt bread. I mean, hello, is this not excellent? Oops, trying to get in the oven. Okay, let's put it on the stove very safe because it's still hot. And we're gonna get a little bowl to put those in. I'm gonna make a really quick tapenade so everything just gets chopped. You can always put it all in the blender maybe. They're starting to look good. So we're gonna do something a little bit different here right now. We are going to use these olives, get them out. Just making a little bit so you don't have to go crazy. Some capers, some anchovies, some lime juice, some herbs, oil, salt and pepper. And as you can see from all the chopping, this is why you could put it in the blender. But I find that certain consistencies, when you put them in the blender, um, it takes forever to get them back out of the bottom of the blender. It's very frustrating. So I prefer to chop it on my board. Okay, then just grab a fork, get those out of there. So the salt bread is traditional. This is not a traditional Caribbean dish at all, but it just is gonna go so well with the salt bread. And then they had all these nice Goya products. 
So I had to try them out. It's all mints, 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 mints. Let's get it into the bowl. So from here, some herbs. pepper. We're back in with the lime juice from before and oil. All of those great flavors are going to sit together and you're just going to get this like pop of flavor on your bread before you get into your main meal. So let's get this set up and on the buffet and then I'm just going to run out all the finished things. We're going to dress our desserts and I believe that everybody should be there by the time we're finished. Yes. We have two, please. Now, I can tell you right now that there's going to be a beautiful pink on the inside of this beef. However, my family is not going to approve of the pink inside of my beef. And they're probably going to make me cook some of it a little bit more. I don't approve of them. But, you know, it's Sunday, it's family Sunday, so I'm going to entertain them just this one time. However, I'm going to slice it so you can see how it should be properly done. Now you see that lovely pink there? Could be mid-rare, but then they would get disowned, so we're not gonna do that. Oh! Farmer's Choice ham. Look at the crackling. Look at, ooh, look at that ham and lift. Yes. It even feels delicious. Let's grab a platter. Okay. All right, I'm gonna taste one more piece. All right, we good. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I need to, you know, look pretty, like the food is gonna look pretty, and we'll be back. Have you seen how to cut like a Bajan? It was filmed right here in this beautiful kitchen provided by Fiber Paul. This kitchen features our custom-made CNC machined frameless cabinetry, fabricated with melamine engineered wood, with soft close hinges, and gloss slides. Under the sink, we use PVC to protect it against moisture. To cap it all off, the kitchen is finished with an absolutely gorgeous white quartz engineered countertop. And this sleek finish is guaranteed to make cooking even more enjoyable. Give us a call today to get your free consultation. The work can be hard enough, Ting. I even finished dress, yeah, but I, I have the belief that somebody will be turning up shortly, so I am getting myself mostly ready. So desserts, we have Jackfruit panna cotta. We have, I can't remember what desserts we have. We got so much things in this house to eat today. Jackfruit panna cotta, yeah? Apple pockets and Bailey's cheesecake. And then the people could come and do as them like. That's what I got to tell you. Oh, is that somebody coming in here? Nazira, how are you? You come to help Auntie? Yeah. All right, 
So, this is your job today. Sit so over here. I want you to taste this apple pocket and tell it don't have any flour. So you tell me if you think Auntie Patsy is gonna like it. Yes? All right. So I'm gonna give you this one. And you can eat that. And there's Leah, how are you? All right, so if you could just help me with the ganache. I'm gonna finish. Get the panna cotta out. And whoops, decorate everything. And everybody should be here soon after that. Nicholas sent me flowers. Yeah, not the I like you kind, the you can eat these kind. Yep, and then let it sit for a bit. Now put these over with the other things. How's your pocket going, Nazira? You like it? Say Auntie Patsy can like it? Yeah? And you got let sit all over your face. You want some makeup, no? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, and now I'm gonna grab that cheesecake that we're putting this ganache on. <sighs> Pray for me. <laughs> You know how things like to embarrass you when you're trying to look that so you know what you're doing. All right, off. Ooh, it lifted nice and clean. You don't object to cheesecake, do you? Because you object to avocados. So I just checking. I know you. All right, you should be able to start with me now. Slide it in the middle. And now we shall reveal. Ooh. Gentle now. Look at that. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. I'll be here all week. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> all right. Pour in the middle and I'm going to smooth. On top. Put your hand up a little higher, so we'll tilt. Yes, there we go. I think we should be good there for a minute. Let me get smooth a little bit smooth. Ooh, Lord, look at us go. I feel like I want some dripping at the edges, no? For the gram. <laughs> Leaving the swirl marks a little bit. I want it to be perfectly smooth. Just want it to be, yes. I'm just gonna finish these. Hopefully I'll get them done before people start arriving. Let's get them on. Mm -hmm. Sound of the men. So they worked me real hard. You see all this food? They worked me real hard this week, Leah. All right, all right, now we're perfect. And would you believe it? I hear somebody else coming through the door. Surprise, surprise. They time it perfect as usual, right? Pot timers. I hope somebody bring ice. Good evening, Cleopatra. Good evening. How are you? I'm doing fine. I see you're ready to take pictures. Go on ahead while I get some ice. Where's my daddy? Nazira ate your apple pocket. And you got the ice. I wonder why. <laughs> I wonder, I wonder how come you remember the... Yeah, you always ready, right? Well, guess what I have in here. Whoa. Do the honors, sir. Good, good. You pour, I will serve. Get my little sticky fingers clean. So, for this season of How to Cook Like a Bajan, thank you very much for coming on this ride with us. We're going to, into dinner soon. So from my family to your family, cheers.
We're back here again. Today, I'm going to make you guys a rum sour, uh, utilizing two citrus rather than one. So I'm going to use a combination of the lemon and lime. We're going to use some aquafaba. And for those who don't know what aquafaba is, aquafaba is a brain made from chickpeas. And what it does is it gives the cocktail a nice silky texture and adds a little bit more foam or what we call head to the cocktail. I'm also going to use just a little bit of cola tonic in this cocktail um, for color and presentation and just to add a little kick to it as well. And of course, fantastic rum you'll be using is the Mount Gay Eclipse or Heritage Blend, which is just going to round off the, and complete this cocktail. So let's get started. So we're doing half a ounce of fresh lime juice and I find fresh citrus just adds so much character and body and life to a cocktail. And then we're also going to add to that half an ounce of lemon and run that off. Ounce of simple syrup gives a nice balance. Some people may not like their sour sweet. I find that here uh, most people ask for additional simple syrup so I just like to make them at a nice balance one time. I'm going to add half of an ounce of aquafaba. Aquafaba made from the brine of chickpeas quarter of an ounce of cola tonic just to increase the flavors and add a little kick and then we're using two full ounces of the Mount Gay Eclipse rum and this rum has such nice flavor and character Some ice And I like to add, I like to use a lot of ice when I'm shaking. Put out a seal and a nice rigorous shake. And then I like to slow it down for the camera. And then we're going to double strain the cocktail. And agitate just to get some additional foam on the top. Then we're going to garnish this with a dehydrated citrus. So what we do is we cut our limes and we dehydrate it in a dehydrator for over 12 hours. And here we go, a nice Bajan rum sour. Mm -hmm. 